Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this very exciting unboxing. Well, I mean, I've unboxed the outer box of the Oak, Ash and Thorn Tarot. I have been so looking forward to this deck since I first backed it on Kickstarter. It's finally here. I'm really, really excited. So we're going to dive into this together. I, I, I have a glass of milk, which is my one of my favorite comfort drinks. And we're just, we're just, we're going to get into this. I'm, I'm really, ex I'm really excited. I don't even know where to start. Okay. So I've opened this part up because my address is on the outside of this, but then I wanted to leave everything else to discover together. So there's this like business card shaped card and it has the queen of swords on it. How pretty is she? Oh, okay. So we're going to set that there. I don't know what this is in this envelope, but I'm guessing this is my backer number, 2151, I'm guessing. So let's just see. Oh, look at that beautiful washi tape. Let's see if I can do this nicely. Oh, the washi tape is like little foxes. Oh, and this is our little certificate of authenticity. Look at this. And you know she hand stamped this. Stephanie Burroughs, the creator of the deck. Look at this. Certificate of Authenticity, Oak, Ash, and Thorn, created by Stephanie Burroughs, illustrated by Adam Ohlers, 2151 of 3500, May 4th, 2020. Love this touch. I'm just going to keep it in its little envelope. I just think that's so special, and I love the fox, the little fox washi tape. How cute is that? So many cute things. And then there's this letter. So it says, hi there. I've possibly traveled thousands of miles or a mere mile or two, but now that I'm here, I must say that it's so lovely to finally meet you. Oh, I love this. I was created with love, so I'd like to think that I provide gentle readings guiding you through any ups and downs you might experience. <clears throat> Please think of me as one of your new friends. There's no right or wrong way to use me. In fact, my creator said that's the great thing about a little deck such as myself. I'm best used intuitively, so I hope you find yourself getting lost in my imagery, interpreting each of my cards in a way that works for you. Want to get to know me a little better? Why not pull a card, or two, or three? Feel a bit lost? Don't worry. I come with reference cards to help guide you. I can also be used in conjunction with other tarot books. So grab yourself a nice cup of tea, or a glass of milk, and snuggle up. I can't wait to begin our new adventure together. Faithfully, your new deck. Okay, getting a letter from my deck, that is the best thing ever. Stephanie, you're amazing. That is such a cool touch. Oh, okay. I have, this is probably one of my most anticipated decks. Oh, there's more things under there. Okay, hold on. So we have, what is this? Is this like a little tie, like a hand dyed little, look at this. Okay, I actually didn't realize that um, my deck came with a reading cloth. But these, as I understand, have been hand sewn and hand dyed. Look at this. Look how pretty that is and how like organic that feels. What a nice touch. Oh, look at this, the way of tea. Okay, I don't know a lot about the reading cloth process, and in the updates we were getting, I actually didn't pay attention to this because I don't typically um, purchase or add on reading cloth, so I wonder if this was a bonus because I didn't, I don't remember adding this on. This must have been a bonus. What a really beautiful touch, and it does feel so organic. What a cool thing, I because I remember something about how these have to be very delicately washed because they're hand dyed. I'm not entirely sure what the process is. And this must be just a scrap here that we can use to tie, it, wrap up our deck and then tie it up. What a nice touch. And then in here, now I remember seeing pictures on social media for doing this part. So let's take a look at that together. So in here, oh, okay, sorry, I'm so excited about this whole experience. Oh my gosh, look at all these little cards. Are you kidding? Are these stickers? Are these stickers or cards? I can't tell. You guys, are these stickers? I feel like I should know this. I feel like this is a sticker. Watch me like wreck this. I don't want to wreck it. Yeah, it's a sticker. Okay. <gasps> okay. These are stickers. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. So we have, I'm guessing this is the two of cups. Look at that. Either the ace of pentacles or maybe the queen of pentacles. We'll see when we go through the deck. Look at this Eight of Swords. Oh, these are all stickers. I love this so much. Oh my gosh. Oh God, 
Adam Oler's artwork is so beautiful. This is our high priestess, I'm sure. Oh, I feel like we voted on these too. So these are prints and they are so lovely and soft and borderless. So we have our lovers. Oh, look at this one. Oh, they're so beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to slide all of this stuff back in here until I'm going to be working on a new um, traveler's notebook and journal set up for next year, and I'll probably want to use some of these things in that. And I'm going to take this little letter and fold it up just like a letter and just tuck it in there. I think that's so sweet. I told you about my camera. I don't even care. Okay, so I'm sure I didn't. Did I fold it? I did fold it. So I'm going to fix it. Okay, all my goodies out of the way. Okay, extra paper out of the way. So excited. And this is this was such an eco-friendly production too. Um, Sarah put a lot of work into researching an eco-friendly printer, and I think she even had to switch printers at one point if I remember right, or something had to change. And and she just really centered earth friendliness the entire way. Look at this beautiful tissue paper with the little rabbits on it. Oh, okay, there's plastic, but it looks like I won't need a knife. So, oh, this has got some weight to it. Okay, that tissue paper is beautiful. I'm going to fold that up. And if I actually remember, I will try to, next time I have a deck trade or something, maybe I'll pack it up with that paper. That's lovely. I try to repurpose papers like that. Okay, so this is almost like a, okay, so there's, it's compostable plastic. Oh, I'm so scared to wreck anything. Oh, there we go. Okay, there's a lip. Yay, and it's open at one end, so I don't need to go find scissors. So that's to keep it safe in case of any moisture, but this is compostable. And, of course, so is the cardboard and the paper packing material. I'm actually going to keep this packing material, too, because this I can also use if I send anything out. This is great stuff, by the way, that paper. Okay, anyways, I'm we're seven minutes in. I'm not even saying anything. So this is really, really lovely. So this is a, um, I forget what this is called, but it's like embossed pressed in. I think letter press is what somebody said. Maybe Dustin told me that. I don't know. Three Trees Tarot Volume 1. Spoiler alert. So I believe if I remember correctly, I saw somewhere, I don't know if I saw it on one of um, Sarah's updates or if I saw it somewhere else, but the next Three Trees Tarot is going to be a, I believe it's still going to be Adam Oler's, which is the artist of this deck, and it's going to be if I remember right, Earth Dragons. So I'm, I'm so excited. Okay. Oak, Ash, and Thorn. Beautiful tarot cards with roots in the enchanting natural world. An eco-friendly Rider Waite Smith inspired art deck containing 78 tarot cards plus two double-sided companion reference, reference sheets, allowing each card to be read intuitively with just the right amount of guidance to support you. Printed by Generation Press. So this is carbon neutral, solar power, vegetable based inks, responsible printing. Um, copyright 2020, made in the UK. Oh, okay, so it's a tuck box. So there is a tuck box trick. If you have, do I have anything here? I'm really scared to open this. Okay, I'm back. I just, so the trick is, I, I did a knife. I didn't want to do this on camera, but I'll just show you what I did. If you have a stubborn tuck box, the first time you're trying to open it, and mine still did bend a little at the corners there. But the first time you're trying to open it, usually if you can slide something, it doesn't have to be sharp. It's just something thin, like a butter knife or something, under there and just kind of gently wiggle. It'll lift up the, the tuck box lid. I've had to do that before. <laughs> You've probably seen me do that trick, but oh. This, this deck will probably not be living in its beautiful box. I'm probably going to, let's see if it will let me take out the bottom. Yeah, this is what I like to do is I open the bottom and the top and I just kind of gently press them down and I store my boxes like this, in a, my tuck boxes like this in a drawer. So this one won't stay in its box because I'm just nervous about opening and closing this one, but it is a really sturdy, nice tuck box. I'm just concerned about opening and closing it a bunch. So that's gonna get stored. This deck is going to migrate into a Peggy bag, and we have a paper sleeve, which I should be able to just tear. Oh, there we go. Little paper sleeve. Oh, okay, so we have our reference cards here. Am I at the bottom? Not at the top. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so we have the major arcana so we have the fool and some keywords and then when you flip it over you have the starting with justice through the world you have the rest of the keywords and then you have cups oh i see 
You have swords and cups and you have wands and pentacles. So that's really clever. So it's two little simple cards that can live with your deck that have the meanings of the cards. So let's take a look at the backs. So pretty. So here you have the rabbit, the fox, the crow, and the squirrel. I had those mixed up. That's the squirrel, that's the fox. Um, and these have a really nice feel. They don't feel, over, it's a chunky deck as you can see, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna be difficult to handle. So it says, thank you, your purchase made our day, and we hope the little pack, this little package brightens yours. Share the love, tag us on Instagram. So three trees, trees tarot, oak, ash, and thorn, and their contact information. Oh, okay, I'm so excited to dive in. So I'm gonna set that aside, and we're gonna zoom in and go through the cards. Here we go. So we're starting off with the Fool. I love these tentative like Bambi first steps, the little butterfly. This is this is classic like Bambi scene to me. Um, but I love how we still have the pack here and the stick and the stick, the staff that's usually being carried over the fool's shoulder. So all of our symbology is there. I love that. And also our fool has a little guardian to help them here, the little butterfly. Which also fun, funny enough reminds me of the last unicorn and the butterfly there. Here's our magician and we have this stunning crow. We have all these little like lightning bugs surrounding all the tools here. So we have the wand, the cup, the pentacle and the sword. So gorgeous. And you can tell it's part of the nest that this bird, that this raven or crow is creating. I really love that. Our high priestess. Now I don't remember what all of the, I'm probably not going to remember this is a falcon if I remember right, like maybe a peregrine falcon. I don't think it's an owl, but it might be an owl. I'm really bad with animal identification, you guys. But if you know, it's just a beautiful card though. I love the mystery. I love that we still have the scroll here and the crescent moon in the background. <coughs> the empress. I love a bunny as the empress. I think bunnies are just wonderful fertility symbols. We still have the heart cut out here in this tree stump with the sign of Venus there. We still have the staff. She's throned. She's got a rose crown. And I love that we seem to have, the major arcana seem to be in the woods at night. Yeah, at night. Oh, so pretty. The emperor as the stag. And he too has a shield here, only this has the ram on it. The full moon behind him, the path, he's very regal. Oh, the Hierophant, look at this little owl, so perfect for the Hierophant. I love that we have this like compass here and we also have this lock and the key being held. I like too that there's some evidence here of sort of hum human life, like the human world. And so you get that idea of sort of pre-exist, like structures and things that are um, in some ways could be both a, or a help or like a hindrance, depending on your perspective. I love this lover card, lover's card, the lovers in the midst of the blackberry bushes. So beautiful. There's something really lovely about this cardstock. It's like, it feels smooth and matte, but it feels really, it feels really nice. The chariot. Again, I'm not sure of this bird. And anybody watching this, feel free to, if you feel like sharing, um, feel free. I love the little snail here. I wonder what the keywords, I'm just going to bring this out and just see. I'm curious what their keywords are for the chariot. Usually it's something around movement, determination, journey, and direction. I love the badger for strength. This is fantastic. Interesting too that it's like it seems like a really big badger because look at this teeny little squirrel on his shoulder. I don't know how big badgers are, but I thought they were much smaller than that. So he seems like larger than life. And then we have this snake, but he's totally got the snake um, under his command, right? Love that. I love the hedgehog as the hermit so much. This artwork is so enchanting. The wheel of fortune. North, south, east, west, and then T-A-R-O. So you get like the idea of the compass, you have the web, you have the bunny here, the snake there, the owl there, some mushrooms and a snail down here. I'm just wondering if they were trying to be the fixed signs or if they're just there to represent the balance in the card. It's interesting here that if you look closely, 
the owl has a little mouse dangling by its tail here. So there's that element of like, who are you in this image? Like, are you just kind of safely looking on? Are you the snake? Are you the mouse? Are you the owl? Or are you just chilling out here like the snail? Love that. The wolf for justice, so pretty. Look at all these balanced stones at the bottom. This hanged man, it just, it's everything. It's such a precarious position. You can tell this little mouse is just hanging on, but also is up higher. And this might be a shrew. I'm not sure if it's a shrew or a mouse. Again, terrible. But I love that he's clinging to a dandelion. You get the sense of holding on to hope and also perspective. Um, I love that so much. Death. What a beautiful death card. And we actually have a butterfly emerging from a cocoon here. So pretty. I'm just going to say a lot of it's pretty because it is gorgeous. Temperance. I love this owl. It seems to be owl. Oh my gosh, you guys. The swan. I do know what a swan is, I swear. <laughs> protecting. Um, you get the feeling almost like it could be protecting someone or something from the breakwater, right? Like there's land and sea and the, the swan is actually creating the barrier between this these two places. So instead of a human where we might see like one foot on, on land and the other foot in the water, here we get the feeling of like literally being in that liminal space between land and sea. Love that. The devil. So this is really great because um, and this is something I often look for in my tarot decks is to see the lovers and the devil next to each other. But here we have our lovers in the blackberry bushes and here the bushes have entangled them. They've ensnared them. We have the Luna moths. Here we have butterflies. Here we have moths in the background. And they're all caught up and stuck versus being free. So that really works. Oh, that tower. Sorry, I'm just trying to like keep track of my cards here. Um, yeah, lightning striking the tree. All these birds losing their home. Oh, the star. What a, what a like really spectacular scene here. What I like is these fish kind of pe peeking their heads out of the water to look up at the stars. That's really pretty. I'm just going to keep saying it's really pretty. I'm sorry. The moon. I just, I love this image. I've loved it since the first time I saw it. I think this was one of the preview images we saw in the campaign. But I love the crescent moon here. And the same way that this squirrel is all curled up at night. The sun. Wow. The way it's breaking through the clouds, the way this particular bird is holding the roses, like the gift being exposed by the sun. The rain is still happening, but it's clearing, right? The sun is coming out. You get this big bright ray here. Judgment. It's so pretty. The world. Oh. Oh, I love this. I love this. This to me feels like almost like a passing of, look at what's happening here. So we have like the completion of the journey. We began here. This deer has gone through this whole journey and is now the elk and can pass down that little world, that light of wisdom and power to the new babe. Um, or fawn, I guess you would call it. And look at the lemnus get here around this bundle of herbs at their pillow. Oh, it's such a full, that's such a beautiful for full circle way to depict. Oh, I love that. Okay. Oh, it's so pretty. Have we talked about the backs? Yeah, we did. Okay. Now we're into the suits. So we're starting with the cups, which is my favorite suit. So we have squirrels in the cups and here there's a cup com coming out of the water. It's full to overflowing, just a blessing. And here we have two squirrels. I love that we have like a gray squirrel and a red squirrel. I love the little heart on the squirrel's tummy here and the flying ladybug here. Oh my God, I love ladybugs so much. Uh, obviously I have my little, I even brought my little ladybug candle for this video. Anyway, so great. I love that. Here we have the three and we have two red squirrels and a gray squirrel and they're all playing together with their little acorn caps. Ugh. The four of cups. I love this. There's like butterflies everywhere. This gray squirrel's like, don't wanna. But there's all of this. I love that too. The five of cups. 
three little cracked and broken acorn caps here, but there's two good ones still on the branch. The Six of Cups. A tree full of bounty, little treats that they've managed to keep and squirrel away. Family and working together. There's like definitely an element of like when things were going well kind of thing. Seven of Cups. I mean, this reads so well as a Rider Waite Smith clone, but it just transports you into this forest world, right? Beautiful Eight of Cups. Adam's artwork is just, it's just, it's everything. This Nine of Cups is so great. You can tell that our little squirrel friend here is incredibly content, surrounded by all these lovely little caps. All of them are intact. He's safe, protected. And then the Ten of Cups. I love these little hearts on their in their fur. I think that's the cutest touch. I've got two cards here, or just one? Just one. I love this, and they're looking out at the sun. Ugh. Our little page of cups, there's still a little fish coming out of the cup. That is great. Our Knight of Cups. Queen of Cups. And King of Cups. Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry, I'm just like soaking it in. So I maybe, I don't know. Ace of Pentacles. I love the hair here. Again, I can't. There's something really unique about this cardstock. It's really beautiful. The Two of Pentacles. She's got to juggle responsibilities here. Like, does she stay and take care of her young? But they're hungry, so she's got to go get them food, right? Like, definitely that feeling of juggling. The funny thing is, the more that I look at this deck, the more that it almost feels very neutral and almost pippish. And I'm not saying that it's pippish. These are beautiful, gorgeous scenes, and they're very Rider Waite Smith here. But there's something that feels very unbiased about this deck. It feels very approachable, and it doesn't feel like it's. It's not being heavy handed with the imagery so that it feels like you're barreled into just one or, or I guess um, pigeonholed maybe into just one definition. Four of Pentacles. Nothing here that's too grippy so it, it works really well for that card to stay neutral. And then here in the Five of Pentacles, oh, it's, the land looks a little more barren out in the rain. There's But there's a stack of coins or pentacles here right next to our rabbit friend and all of this hopeful... All this hopeful starlight around. They're not alone. The Six of Pentacles. And sort of sharing the bounty with the other creatures of the forest. The Seven of Pentacles. The leaves are falling. This is very... Is the whole deck very autumnal? It feels very fall. Like very... I suppose there's elements of it that are could be very summer. But at least the Pentacle suit feels very like... Autumn. It's very transportive, this deck. It's like I feel like I need to soak it in. The Eight of Pentacles. The Nine of Pentacles. Lots of bounty everywhere. I love the little ladybugs and the butterflies everywhere. They make me happy. The Ten of Pentacles. The page. I love the little hearts on their bones. The Knight of Pentacles. Very stable, this one. The Queen of Pentacles. Mama Bunny here. And the King of Pentacles. Again, were the cups like fall, kind of? Maybe they were more summer. Yeah, maybe cups were more summer. It's interesting because the, the, the settings are so, are kind of neutral toned, right? These colors are earthy and more natural feeling, not 
primary colors or super they're not vivid they're saturated they're just not those those brights they're not bright okay, ace of swords so now we're into the suit of crows oh these are so pretty oh my gosh the two of swords the three of swords yeah i feel like this deck in spite of the fact that it hints at rider weight smith meanings it hits it hints in the meanings but it keeps it keeps what's happening in nature feeling very front and center so i feel like this deck would read in a very neutral way the same way i would read a pip deck where it feels like i'm focusing more on the numerology the five of swords The six of swords oh my goodness the hope in this card and the being able to like envision a future away from the turmoil seven of swords what is happening it feels like somebody's maybe even trapped in there interesting what's the keyword here for the seven of swords what do they have for it the seven is dishonesty and greed. Transition, uncertainty, yeah, dishonesty, greed. Fear and self-limitation, yes. Yeah, so the keywords in this little reference cards will be really nice. Um, you definitely feel the restriction. Again, very Rider Waite Smith clone, which it, it claims to be, right? Um, the nine of swords. Oh. And the Ten of Swords. Oh, I wish we weren't being stabbed, but I love all the butterflies um, coming out. You get the feeling like this is not, like there's no blood happening, right? So you get the feeling that this is like um, a culminating kind of experience. But it doesn't have to be quite so final. There can be transformation in that. Page of Swords. Knight of Swords. There's our Queen of Swords, King of Swords, and we're into the Wands. Oh, I, I literally, it's almost meditative to look at this deck. The Ace of Wands. Oh, I love the tree here, the Two of Wands. We have our foxes all through this suit. Oh, yes. Okay, so sorry. The Two of Wands to me is very much a planning card. And the Three of Wands is very much a card of, like, embarking. And the fact that the light is shining on the path ahead and you get that feeling with the shadows and the way that they're going and the birds, you get the feeling of, like, setting out, right? Setting out on an adventure. The Four of Wands. This cardstock. I can't wait to shuffle this deck. The Five of Wands. This is classic, like, territorial stuff happening here. The Six of Wands. The Seven. Yeah, the positioning and everything, it's so Rider Waite Smith. But then you have something like this, the Eight of Wands, where instead of all the wands just streaking across the sky, you have this like bright starburst sun of energy and you get the feeling that that energy could be directed outward or could be coming inward and I really like that. The nine of wands, we have our fox looking a little bit worse for the wear, but he's hanging in there. And the ten of wands. Now this is great. So instead of actually like this is, is like a fox that's like good self care and action. Like he knows he's got a lot to deal with so he set them down. He might be potentially actually dropping a ball here because this one may be about to swim away, like float away. But he's recognized that he needs to rest because he can't do it all, all the time. Page of Wands. The Knight of Wands. I like how, is there in the page too? Hold on. So the page is like little butterflies. In the Knight though, we have like a bee. We still have the salamanders carved into the tree. That's interesting. There's salamanders carved into the tree here. I wonder if I missed that on other cards. I probably did. <clears throat> the queen of wands. And look at the little cub. So cute. The king of wands. And these are, are some extra cards. So we have possibilities 
And this card has a beautiful dragon surrounding this fox's den, but we still see the squirrel and the crow, and there's a rabbit in the fox's den. So they're like all one grouping. And here we have, here we have just like a couple of extra cards. So I think this is the teaser for the next deck, which will be a dragon based deck. I don't think I'll shuffle this in. I don't think I'll shuffle this in either. It's super cute though. And then we have a little fox sort of stalking through the grass. So I think I'll leave these out of the deck. I think what I'll do is I'll keep these actually with the box when I store it. Because I don't think I'm going to be using those with these with the deck, but I'm excited to see what they do with the dragon theme. That's really exciting. So I think I'm going to keep these stored with the box. These little reference cards, though, I think I'm going to keep these with the deck because I think these are really special um, and will be fun to kind of refer to. So I'll keep these handy. Let's zoom out and let's see how the deck the deck is to shuffle. It is quite chunky, but it feels like it's like maybe 3.30. Ooh, it's got a really nice flex. So it's not stiff. It looks it looks really chunky in the hand, but like, and like when you when you pick it up, it feels really chunky. But the cardstock, like, it like has an easy bend to it yeah it's a really really nice riffle shuffle so pretty oh okay so let's just lay a few cards out and see what we think the eight of wands the page of swords and the four of swords Look at that. What a beautiful deck. I think if you wanted to be able to have a animal deck in your collection or in your possession that you could just shuffle and draw cards for and read exactly like you would read a Rider Waite Smith deck or a Pip deck and just have these beautiful scenes, I think this is wonderful for that. It feels like it just connects you right into the natural world. You have the speed and the illumination and the Eight of Wands. <clears throat> you have the sense of like discovery and curiosity in the page of swords and then in the four of swords you have this need to sort of just rest the crow here just curled up on the top sword like i need a break right despite what's going on around me i think this is a really going to be an easy breezy reader very comfortable to pull out and just throw cards down and have and give meaningful readings the other thing is that a lot of times nature decks can feel very approachable, particularly to people who are newer to tarot, as far as people who you read for, for example, a friend or a family member. And so animal decks like this, like this has a lovely storybook, storybook kind of feel to it. Very soft, very approachable. Um, it kind of feels like it's the halfway point in a way between my Brady tarot, which is very sort of National Geographic, like intense kind of nature. And my tarot fauna, which is very sweet and has a similar structure to this one where we have uh, different creatures that each dominate their particular suit. Um, and so this feels where tarot fauna feels sort of extra sweet and playful and Brady tarot can feel very intense and sort of, again, National geographic -y. This sort of fits in the sweet space between where it's got a serious or more serious, um, more almost believable or realistic sort of like tone to it without being overly harsh and I think Brady can sometimes be like extra intense but for an animal deck that is wrapping itself around Rider Waite Smith tarot meanings I think this deck just does a beautiful beautiful job and it just makes you feel like you're a part of nature and I don't know how much of that is even just also the energy put behind printing this in an ecologically friendly and supportive way um, it was a very mindful creative process and you know just knowing that this is not contributing to harming the earth it just I don't know it just feels like I'm very close to this world it doesn't feel far away it definitely feels like something I can access and I think that's really really great this almost feels like it could be a really great hug deck even though I don't think it's going to shy away from giving on point like tougher messages 
really beautiful deck. And I, oh, it doesn't want to fan for me though. Oh no, what am I going to do? We're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. We're going to, we're going to help it along. Why is it doing that? It shuffles so beautifully. You know what? We're going to do it a different way. We're going to go this way. Oh no, we can do it. We can do it. We're going to fake it. How about that? What do you guys think? So that, my friends, <laughs> I feel like I've been all over the place, but I feel like as soon as I started like looking at the cards, they just pulled me right into the world. And next thing you know, I'm here and I'm not on camera anymore. So it just kind of, it pulled me away in a really interesting way. This is definitely a deck that I feel like slows me down in, in a really interesting way. And I don't know if you noticed that when I was walking through the cards, but it felt like my whole pace just like slowed and it felt really lovely. So that, my friends, is the Oak, Ash, and Thorn Tarot. I am really excited to have brought this into my collection. I'm so excited to get to know it a little bit better. I can't wait to hear what you guys think of it once you've had a chance to get to know it if you bring it into your collection. Is this one that you're getting? Is this one that you're thinking about? Is it one that you backed on Kickstarter? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm always curious to hear what you guys think. Thank you so, so much for joining me for this walkthrough. Please do like this video if you enjoyed the walkthrough, share, subscribe if you're new here. Don't forget to hit that little bell. And remember, if you want to book a reading with me, you can always do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thank you so, so much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye, guys.